Righty ho, so we've completed the weld on the opposite side as when we finished off in the last video we did the prep for the weld and we machined in until we come to the back of the weld on the opposite face. So we'll get all this cleaned up now, we'll rough machine all this, then we'll flip the part over and we'll finish machine the other side and then flip it back and finish machine this side. I think that's the way we go because this side here is purely decorative the other side has the important features that need to be done um, in the right fashion. Okay, well that's as far as we need to go for this side, and we'll flip the part over and have a look, see what's going on over the other side, and we'll take some dimensions then. So I'll just do a quick check to see how we're travelling at the moment with it regards to our depth from the, this face to this front shoulder or front face of the boss. We zero our indicator there. Drop out down here. So we're about 70, 70 thou still to go um, off this face here, which is good. Gives us plenty for a final cleanup. It's enough to take these little couple of minor blemishes out, which would be good. So we're looking good there. So time to tackle the other side. Okay, so I swapped over to my good chuck, I only ever hold 
good machine parts in this chuck. I never hold anything that hasn't been freshly machined. Okay, so we'll take a quick skim across the outside and then we'll start working on some of these features inside here. If I have, while I'm working the inside of that, if I have um, chatter issues or anything like that, I'm probably going to have to swap over and put the outside jaws on and grip on our newly machined surface that we have on the outside. across here So with our DNMG sitting there on a fair bit of angle of the dangle, we'll get what we can just in this area here before we have to switch tools. So we're still running on 420 RPM and we're just hand feeding. So this is what we're replicating here, so we've got a fair bit to turn off this boss to come down to here. So at this stage our finish size is uh, 51.5 and on here we are 52.6. So this is where we've got to be careful here because there's a large my pencil. This cuts down here, which isn't really necessary. We'll put probably some of that in. What we've got to be careful of, this cuts in at the same angle as this is relieved, uh, this side here relieves out. So the thickness, this wall thickness from this face here to this face here we've got to be very careful of so that we don't lose it. So we're safe to come all the way across at a depth of I think that's about 10 millimeters deep from this face. So we're safe to plow all, all the way across there and then we'll do some pretty careful checking so we, we maintain our correct wall thickness here. If you get my drift.
Okay, that's about all we're going to get out of that now. So I think I'll work on this diameter here next and we'll open this up close to its finished size. That will allow us better access to get into this inside pocket. So this dimension across here is a critical dimension on the part of 91.5 thereabouts. So we'll take a cut in, a cleaning cut and get a, a measurement. So we've slowed the lathe down to 300 RPM and we've got our um, high speed steel plunge cut tool in that we had before. It's looking all right. So if I could run the lathe in reverse, I'd look at probably using a small boring tool like this and coming in this way to remove this last portion here. But because uh, reverse is shagged on this lathe, I still have to get it fixed. I will just keep persisting with that plunge cut tool. So. I'll knock the rest of this shoulder out and then I'll bring you back. Okay, as you can, might be able to pick up on the camera. We're, we've gone as far as we can with this plunge cut tool because we're going to start rubbing just here. I don't really want to modify this tool so I have another tool which I can fit in there. So now we've taken the bulk of it off, we'll be able to get in with this um, tool here. Just before we start tickling up the base in this shoulder with that other tool that we showed before, we'll just get this bore to size, it's got to be 92 millimetres and I've got about a millimetre to come out of it. Get her in gear. We've slowed the lathe down, we are in uh, 170 RPM. Okay, let's get a size. So I've reading off my vernier, I've got it set zero absolute when I had preset this to 92. So it just tells me then uh, the amount that I have to take off. It saves me trying to calculate it in my head. So it's not going to give me the diameter, but it will tell me I've got uh, 0.52 millimeters to come off. Okay.
Okay, we'll see how we're travelling. According to me, we are there. Get us in the right spot. Yeah, that's we're there. Zero. Just re zero. We should be ninety two. Yep. Good enough for the working class. Okay. So now we can get our small tool in here and um, deal with the remaining features on the inside. So this is just a small uh, round nose tool that we've got in the lathe here so this should enable us to get in to finish those remaining features. So we'll probably go and see how she goes on uh, try it on 300 rpm. Okay, that's come out rather well. So we've got our free-handed radius right here in the corner. So we'll just swing our tool around a bit squarer, and we can pick up off this part. Well, you won't see that. You know, we'll come around the other side here. So this part just here is our lowest point. So we have to swing our tool around and pick up off this part, and continue the cut along, and then blend into this radius which we've just done here. Seeing we've been cutting into the weld that we've been doing there, I just want to make sure our tool has a good edge on it. Okay. So it's just a fine little piece of our stone. Right, get it readjusted. Okay, so we're going to be blending this area here into the remaining part as far as along as we can reach.
Okay, we're there. That was easy and painless. So I'll check, but I think that's all of our features there done. We'll give that a polish up with some memory paper, and then we'll start tackling the bore. Right, we're getting there. So what we've got to check now is the dimension from this face, because this face will be our datum face for the depth of this bearing bore and also for the features on the rear and it's also the datum face to here which is the surface here so to get that right this is the friction um, part of the clutch so this goes on here so we'll just run a straight edge across the top and I can measure down onto that boss Good piece of light with 29 millimeters. Okay. So our part goes on there. We are 28.5, uh, 28 and a quarter. So we've got three quarts of a millimetre to take off this face here. Yep. We'll get a tool set up and ooh, we're stuck. Get our tool set up, we'll just face three quarts of a mil off there. That's three quarters there on the dial. Okay, we'll have a measure. Cut twice, measure once, see how it goes, isn't it? And we're 29 on the knocker. Okay. So. That's why I use a board. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, do the features on the inside now. So we've got a bore this to take a bearing, and then there's a smaller bore inside for the motor shaft. Lady, pissing down rain outside it has been all day. At least it's 
17 degrees C, so it's not cold, it's not too bad. So we have a boring bar set up now, so we take this bore out here to suit this bearing. Okay, we've got a size. So our bearing is uh, 43 millimeter. We're 38 millimeter, so five mil to come out. So I'll bring you back when we're on our finishing cuts. So sometimes when I'm doing a roughing cut, I'll set the dial, movable dial here to the, the amount that's got to come out which in this case is 4mm then I don't have to count or worry, I can just count off the dial till I'm coming up close to zero somewhere around this vicinity here, then I'll stop and take another measurement so 